This is the fourth tutorial of the series on the Dialog System's cutscene sequences. This tutorial covers entry tags, which are a way to significantly streamline your content workflow for large projects. In this tutorial, we'll work with audio weight sequencer commands, but the same concepts apply for other content such as animation. The simplest way to play audio in a dialog entry is to place an audio weight command in a sequence field and give it a file name or you can drag that audio clip into the sequence field and it will automatically generate the audio weight command for you. But you can imagine that this would be extremely tedious to do for every single dialog entry. A better solution is to use entry tags. An entry tag is a unique string assigned to every dialog entry. To get the list of entry tags for your dialog database, go to the database tab and expand export database. You can choose the format to use for the entry tag by selecting the entry tag format dropdown. In this case, the format that we're going to use is the actor's name, the conversation ID number, and the dialog entry ID number. Then click export. We'll save this as a CSV file that we can load in a spreadsheet application such as Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. This is what the spreadsheet looks like. We can see that every dialog entry has an entry tag in the first column. When recording the lines of dialog, your voice director or audio technician can save each line using the entry tag as the file name. For the Dialog Systems demo scene, you can see that we did exactly that and put them in a resources folder. In the Dialog Entries audio weight command, we could specify the audio clip as it's named, or we could specify the special keyword entry tag. That keyword will be replaced by the dialog entry's unique entry tag. Inspect the dialog manager and make sure that the entry tag format matches what you used for your file names. Now, instead of the file name, we can use the special keyword entry tag. This still doesn't help too much because we'd have to put this into every single dialog entry. A better idea is to leave the dialog entry sequence fields blank and instead set the Dialog Manager's default sequence. You can see here that the Dialog Manager's default sequence references the entry tag keyword. This means that it will play the audio clip specific to each entry. Remember that you can use the entry tag keyword anywhere in a sequence. So if you have animation clips specific to each dialog entry, you can use those with an entry tag also. If you're localizing to different languages, you can use the special keyword entry tag local. The value of entry tag local is the same as the value of entry tag, but with the language code appended to the end of it. So let's say we're also localizing to French. If we set the dialog manager's default sequence audio weight to entry tag local, and if the default line would be player underscore one underscore one, then for French players, entry tag local would be player underscore one underscore one underscore fr. The change happens automatically because we're using entry tag local. If your project has a lot of voiced content, I strongly recommend using entry tags since it will significantly streamline your workflow. And that's it for this tutorial.